السلام عليكم شيخ وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته So let's just go, let, let's just go ahead, Sheikh. So in Malaysia, over there is 11, over here is 9, but we're right on yes. time. We're right on time. Alhamdulillah. Shukur, shukur. Allah, Allah, Allah connect us again. MashaAllah. So tell us, uh, I'm going to take us back in history again. So we met, I believe it was, correct me if I'm wrong, first time we met, that was uh, in Hajj. And you gave me something that I still use to this day. To show the mercy of Islam, because you went and you went over the letters I S L A M. Islam says love all mankind. Can you go ahead and elaborate on that? Yeah, because when you say Islam I S L A M, you also can translate into I is I, S is shall, A is all, L is uh, no uh, L is love, A is all. M is mankind. So I shall love all mankind. I S L A M. So that is what the Prophet was sent for. Allah said to us that, Oh Muhammad, we now send you except to bring the mercy to the world. To everybody, not only to one race or only to the Muslim, but Rahmatulil Alameen to the world. So this is very important, you know, because of the, the mercy. The mercy is more than love because having mercy meaning you are prepared to go through all the pain and suffering just to save others, to save the ummah, to bring people from darkness to light. Even they are not ready to accept, they go against you, but because of the mercy you have, you keep on praying for them, you keep on inviting them, and of course, at the end of the day, Allah said, the one who gives hidayah is Allah, not us. I, I like what you mentioned about mercy because we often get this word thrown around. He says to her, she says to him, I love you, baby, and all these empty slogans, right? But there's no mercy between the two. <laughs> Just empty yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. But the mercy, as you said, Prophet Muhammad was sent as a mercy to all mankind. So what would you say to the president of France now? with all of the attacks that are happening against Islam, what would you say to him regarding this mercy of Islam? Yeah, we as a Muslim... You know what's obviously going on in France now, right, Shia? Yeah, yeah we, are, we are following this very closely too. You see, and then we always believe that this is one of the areas that may be something the Muslim must reflect, number one. Whether we have been talking to all these people about Islam, the, especially Muslim leaders. I'm not talking about the public. When you talk about president, you talk about politicians. So leader to leader, like our prophet, yeah, when he was the leader of the ummah, he was addressing the other leaders. But today, the Muslim leader is so naive, so weak. You know, they don't even present Islam to other leaders. So they are very ignorant. To me, I would say they are ignorant. When you are ignorant, sometimes you can be arrogant. So it is just too bad. But it's a weak call for everybody. You know, this is just something that Allah is telling us again. That we Muslim, wherever you are, you must set a good example. You must integrate. Yeah, with everybody so that show them this is Islam. Islam is about unity. Islam is about love. We don't care what color you are. No, we all like uh, are children of Adam. And all children of Adam, we are like one big family. And Allah created us different race and nation. Our tribe is for us to get to know one another. So when that one fail, this thing can happen, this fitna. Of course, it is not wise for a, for a leader, a very intelligent person, a person who are so high above. Yeah, they should be very, very careful when they speak, when they talk about others. Now, leaders should unite people not to create unrest and hatred. So, of course, we are hurt. As a Muslim, we must feel hurt. 
because we we love our prophet more than ourselves. That's why, you know, they don't understand. They just don't understand. There are people who say, no, the Muslim, if you go and burn the Quran, you go and talk about it, they still, you know, very patient. When you hit Prophet Muhammad, now the Muslim is just have to wake up. How about the, uh, you mentioned leaders. Was it Im Imran, the one of the leaders from I mean, the president of Pakistan? It seems like, what do you think? Is he taking up the call? Like he's, uh, it seems like many are sleeping there. But what do you think about him? Have, has, has, he, has he tried to do uh, some of this, what you're talking about at all? We, we hope that our leader will be very proactive. So when a leader... To a leader, when they talk to one another, it, it makes a lot of big, difference. Big difference, right? Big difference. So the lead, the leaders need to step up and have some have some um, courage to go ahead and share this yeah. message. What do you think about the courage of our brother Habib, who been also kind of stepping up a little bit, and he spoke out against this and this president and these attacks on the Prophet Sallallahu Have you heard of this of Habib? Uh, no, no, I don't think I follow everything. No, uh, closely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us, tell us for the people that don't know, you actually you were formerly a were you were a Buddhist. We did that program before, but you were actually you were a Buddhist yes. at one time, right? Yes, yes, of course. And of then course. You, were you officially? I don't remember a monk also. Not really a monk, but I I am one of the good followers. A Bo <laughs> and and I you don't reach the, the level of a monk, you know. But we are going towards that. Tell us, uh, I remember you telling me uh, the story of Guatama Buddha, about him, um, about him possibly maybe even being a prophet. I remember getting that f from you. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, we know that our Prophet Wasallam mentioned that many, the 120 over thousand of prophets been sent. Of course, they are not, is there's only 300 and 13 or 315 that is uh, a messengers and then only 25 is recorded in the Quran but there are many that the name is not been uh, known only Allah know best but why we say that is not impossible is because of the teaching every prophet was sent as Bashiran wa Nazira Bashiran and Nazira to convey uh, glad tidings, good news for those who follow, and also to warn those who disbelieve and those who reject. And then, if you look in the teaching of Guatama, then you'll find that he will always end with sukka wa dukka. In the Sanskrit language, sukka wa dukka means glad tidings and warning, good news and bad news. And then you see that the, the, they have, you know, the one was the most important uh, ingredient in Arkan Iman, yeah, that we Muslims must always uh, be very strong in that is to believe in Qadr and Qadr, the sixth, the last article of faith. There is to believe in what has been ordained, what has been predestined by Almighty Creator Allah Rabbul Alameen. And then when you look into the teaching of Guatama, then you come up with the karma. Karma is about qada and qadar. So of course we do want, we cannot claim 100% because the name is not been mentioned in the Quran or in the Hadith. But we know that Allah said that I have sent to all nations the kulli ummah rasulan an Allah wa stanibu ta'ud. We have sent to every nation a messenger. So, Wallahu alam bisawa. But the teaching never contradict to my understanding, yes. Yeah, because you you being a part of someone who was actually a Buddhist, but then you actually ended up going above and beyond. You end up uh, really looking into Islam. You accepted Islam, submission to the Creator, not the creation. You accepted it. And now comparing the teachings there of the pure monotheism, how did how do you see it? Then you became an Islamic scholar. How do you see from your perspective that it evolved to where it is today? From You talked about his life. He was a, a simple man. You know, he kind of went away, if I remember from... Before, 
he was a prince and then suddenly he came to realize to see the reality of life because when he was in the palace they don't really show him all the the real uh, the reality of life the suffering the poor the old age they want him to just see everything that is beautiful until one day when Allah's qadar that he was been he was able to travel with his parents out from the palace and that is the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the way that he managed to just get out from the main group and then he saw behind all the beautiful picture that's been displayed in front of him he saw how people is suffering the poor the sick the old age then he start to realize something is wrong what i was been informed been exposed in the palace been taught by my parents and the people around me in the palace is just like a drama a show the reality is different so alhamdulillah allah gave him the awakening that's why you call buddha buddha came from the root word of but but means the awakening so he think you see he is starting to think he want to go, get out and like he want to look for the truth he want to look for the answer to what is life now i'm living in a palace with everything around me everybody is smiling everybody is good everybody is healthy but i now i realize outside the palace people are suffering people are dying so that's why he make an attempt to make a hijra he left the palace and make his first hijra he left and that's where he was looking and looking and he just look. he found some people who was uh, doing a lot of meditation uh, in the wilderness but the way they they do uh, about what they are trying to do is it, it didn't you know attract him because it looks so dirty so ugly not clean what is this so he don't believe that that should be the way yeah to find god that shouldn't be the way to get closer to god that shouldn't be the way so then he keep on searching no one can guide him no one can give him an answer until he make a kalwa and all prophet do kalwa prophet muhammad went to guahira the prophet moses went up to the mountain everybody go for an isolation called kalwa and there he was meditating under the bu tree and that's where he was given the enlightenment and that's why after receiving the enlightenment then he start his mission he start his call and there is when he was named as buddha because the word buddha means the enlightened one so the word enlightened to us is hidayah so so now you connect these i mean uh so what translate the word again to uh, awaken what's the word awakening 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 bud 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 so bud means uh, awakening so awakening so when you're awakening when to you... the reality of this dunya right this life you yeah. can you can tr you can yeah. you can really relate to the concept of islam thinking like what's the purpose of life why am i what am i right. living for where am i going when i die awaken to the reality that you're going to die that this life is transitory is short that concept is there but how did it evolve Sheikh? how did it evolve to where it is today where we see people actually work worshiping themselves as a god worshiping buddha you know worshiping the creation through this yeah you, it's where we call man-made religion the cult comes in people start to make money and commercialize everything oh commercialized business it now became bit yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you make an idol, and then you can sell. It's a good business, you know. Ah. And then to say, no, hey, this is this is the the Buddha that can help you. Like happened in the time of Abraham, the father, Azar. He is the idol maker, you know. And then he he is calling people to sell his his idol, and then tell people to worship this idol. It's a big business. So it happened to every generation. Even the time of Jesus, it happened. Jesus never called people to worship him. Neither Buddha called anybody to worship him. And you see, they have they have prostration. If you look at the Buddhists when they do their prayer, they prostrate. There are a lot of chanting. Yeah. 
So if you look at that, then you see that there's a lot of similarity. A link with one to another. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alham. The only problem today is when people start to worship something, they are starting to make sure that everybody that later on will follow their idea. And people, majority of the people today, they are blind follower. They don't really want to think. They don't even want to reflect. They just want to be a good follower. If they follow the right one, alhamdulillah, the truth, shukur. But majority are not doing that. That's why in the Quran, the only book that if you go back, if you compare the Old Testament and the New Testament, in the Quran, the last testament, Allah keep on reminding us, No, don't you think, don't you reflect. See, Allah wants us to have an open mind. Don't do anything without knowledge. Allah said in Surah Isra, don't say or do anything without knowledge. Why? Because when you are a blind follower, then you can easily be misguided by anybody. There's a beauty of Islam, you see. There's a beauty of Islam. That's how I communicate with my own people when I talk to them, when I talk to the people of or the Christian, I was a Christian too before. Then I talked to them and said, Brother, sister, do you believe in Jesus? They say, Of course. How you cannot be a Christian if you don't believe in Jesus. Good. Now we cannot be a Muslim if we don't believe in Jesus. I said, Can you be a Christian if you don't believe in the Bible? He said, No. But must we believe in the Bible? He asked me back. I said, I don't know. I'm asking you, can you be a Christian? Without believing in the Bible. I think no. I think we should believe. Good. We Muslim cannot be a Muslim. If we don't believe in the Injil. Now I'm going, I'm going now a bit further. Do you believe in Moses? And then they ask me. Why must I believe in Moses? I don't know. I just want to ask you. How you feel? How about you? How about your feeling to Moses? You see we cannot be a Muslim. If we don't believe in Moses. Then I'm going to talk again. Can you do you believe in Ibrahim? They say, why you are bring me further and further? And I said, no, I'm just asking. If you don't believe, then you have problem because it's written in your Bible. You see? So if you believe, then I have another important question. What is the name of the God of Moses? What is the name of the God of Ibrahim? Can you say that they worship Jesus? Because Jesus came later on. Are you telling me there's no God before that? They don't believe in God. You know Abraham believed in God. You know Moses have God with him. But what is the name of the God of Moses? So I'm just going to make them start to think. I want you just to reflect for a while. So you see, when we become a Muslim, we don't lose anything. We believe in Jesus, we believe in the angel, we believe in Moses, we believe in the Torah, we believe in the Sufi of Ibrahim. We believe in everything. That is the beauty of this religion. It unites everybody. Allahu Akbar. So, Shay, so you also, you had your experience of being a Christian also. And now, yes, so yeah. you, you got to, to experience Buddhism, Christianity, and over my years of interviewing people, that's what I've found. I've I found that if a person was sincere, they were genu genuinely seeking the truth. I mean, and they would see, they would test the man-made religions. But then, when they came to Islam, submission to the Creator, not the creation, they would see Allah. the the connection that their heart had to it, and it would really stand out from all the rest. Of course. And what do you think is the, the main problem today, what are you seeing that even amongst some Muslims that now many, some don't appreciate? You know, it has to be someone like yourself, you know, somebody who had to really go outside and, and really investigate. But some people take it for granted because maybe my father was Muslim or my, uh, my parents. And, but then when it comes down to actually submitting, right, uh, themselves and obeying the commands of Allah, their creator, they're kind of like Burger King, have it your way. They're kind of just, you know, uh, uh, making things up as they go. Have you, have you seen a lot of this happening? Oh, yeah, it's happening everywhere. <laughs> it's happening everywhere. 
Yeah, I, 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 I don't blame a lot of them, Brother Eddie. You know why? Through my humble experience mixing around with them, the elders, the corpora, the intellectual, the academician, you know, and everybody, I mix with all group of people. Yeah, uh, from from the the lowest of the low to the upper of the up. You know, so then I I I I I start to realize, you know. What went wrong with a lot of fellow Muslim brothers and sisters who are getting further and further away from Islam? The so-called they are secular, so-called they are liberal. There are so many new groups here yeah, coming up. If you look carefully, you realize that what went wrong is because of the tarbiyah. The tarbiyah means the Islamic education that was been given to them, majority of the born Muslims are just focusing on ritual without values. Teach them to read the Quran, memorize the Quran without understanding. So what can the Quran benefit them? You can say, I memorize the Quran, you know, I read the Quran. But now I don't believe in the Quran. Of course, because you don't understand. The value is not there. So when they have the value, that's why the Prophet was sent to focus on the Aqidah and the value, the adapt. You know, that what that is how it starts. It adapt how to develop. Yeah. The human to think like human. Don't play God and don't be like an enemy. We are no animal. Either you become the lowest of the low or somebody overconfident, they claim that I'm God, like Pharaoh. You know, so both sides, but Islam is always in the middle. That's why the Prophet said, umur The best affairs is always when you are in the middle. And Allah said to us, Wa ummatan wasata. We and we created you, the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad as the middle Ummah, who will bear witness to everybody. Allahu Akbar. It's how, a big responsibility. How, how do you see now when you are growing up? Can you paint a picture or we can see like the definition of a, of a man, uh, let's say a woman, compare that when you were coming up and then now the generation, what are you seeing? Like now when you have application forms, you have, I don't know if they have that in Malaysia now, you have male, female, and then over here, non-binary. Are you familiar with these terms? <laughs> So uh, they, they, where you have, are you seeing a direct attack on the masculinity of a man trying to make a man more like a woman, a woman trying to make a woman like a man? I mean, obviously a man is also someone who's compassionate, who's merciful, who's loving all these qualities. But also what's the definition Islamic of a man, a, a man's man and a woman's woman yeah. when you were coming yeah. up and then today? Yeah, if you go back to the history, history repeat, Brother Eddie, history repeat. This problem of you know, half man and half woman, he, she, and she, he, all this, it happened before yeah. all of us. It happened, it's not something new to us. Everybody is aware of at the time of Lord and so on. But then, what did God say about these people? Do God acknowledge, accept them, and do God say, it's okay? No. And that's why even in Buddhism, even in Christianity, in Judaism, in all religion, they just cannot accept what that we are accepting today because we are playing God today. We know this thing will happen. It's part of Allah's Qadr, but we are not here to promote we are not here to endorse. We are here to help them if they need help. If not, we have to leave them to Allah Almighty. Is sometimes this kind of thing, yeah, it, it do not just it's not just a virus that attack your body, it attack your mind, your brain. You know, and now you cannot think straight anymore. You just do not know how to differentiate. Yeah, between hawk and bottle. We know the creation starts with Adam and Eve. Everybody who believes in the book, they must accept it. 
Yeah, there's no no other than is on Adam and if male and female was a Khazari, Allah said, Wajalnakum shit min wa minan uh Allah said, Ya you hannas in na kalaknakum min zakari wa unsa. I created male and female. Other than that is a disease. Whatever you want to name is up to you. You can come up with new term, but still according to the book from the time Adam was created until the end of time the law, the divine law will not change. Allah will only recognize the he and a she. And this is not something yes, this is not something new. I mean this is according to the teachings of yes. Jesus, Jesus peace be upon him, according to the Jesus, uh, teachings of Moses, Abraham, yes. they all taught the same thing, a pure monotheism, differentiating the role of the man and the woman. Uh, you also right. have the, these are the teachings of uh, Christianity, of of Judaism. So this is not like uh, anything new. But what people are bringing now, uh, that's something that's going against uh, what the Creator has sanctioned from all of us. Tell us, uh, what do you when when we say this wor word also Rira, Rira? What do we you know? Uh, what does that define that word from us and how, how do we uh, implement this as men in our lives Rira, this term Rira, and do you see this kind of going away from from many yeah because Allah Rabbul Alameen have, have warned us about this you know the man you see the prophet also have warned us about the common time you know so the the the, the man have lost their identity as a man. The woman will dress like a man, the man dressed like a woman, they behave just the opposite. Sometimes they, they started with fun, it's just funny, it's just an act, you know. But later on, it become an issue. You see, that's why Islam always said prevention is better than cure. We know we're just like the virus COVID-19 today, you know. How do Islam, introduce this prevention is better than cure. Whoever is affected is a, a, a virus, a disease that is very, very uh, fatal, very, very dangerous. It can spread very far. They cannot move from that area. Total isolation. And the one that is not been affected cannot enter a complete yeah, quarantine. This is not New, not only the World Health Organization come up with this SOP, it was recommended by our Prophet some a thousand years ago. But a lot of this good teaching that was guided by Allah Almighty who created us, who know what is the best way to solve our problem, but we have failed ourselves because we overconfident, we thought that we know better than God. If everybody would just come back to God, and look for his guidance. And he said, follow this man, because this is the time that nobody can be the way except Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. In the time of Moses, Moses is the way to God. In the time of Jesus, Jesus is the way to God. In the time of Prophet Muhammad, until the end of time, Muhammad Wasallam, the man where the people are talking bad about him, he is the only way to God. Allah said, in kuntum Allah, if you say you believe in God, you love Him, you love Allah. Allah just command us to follow one man. Then you gain the love from Allah. We fail to follow this man. Allah said, Fattabi'uni. You have to follow my last messenger to you, Muhammad. Then I, Yuhbibkum Allah, I, Allah, the Creator, will love all of us. And when he loves us, the first thing he will do, he will forgive all our sins. Allahu Akbar. So just to, just to conclude now, uh, you see a lot of Christians, uh, people, I've interviewed um, Christians, and one in particular who was really fascinated uh, about how Muslims hold firmly to many of the divine commands that God Almighty has sent. Like we, we talked about the pure monotheism. This is the one thing when somebody really looks at between the man-made religions and then they look at the truth of the pure monotheism, 
this just stands out from the rest, and this is what really brings the majority of people to Islam. But then you have the, the moral code, the manners, and then not swaying away where Islam is not like a buffet, like, you know, just do it your way. And then everything is just there. It's laid out. People respect that. They really, you know, this Christian in particular, one Christian, his name is Owen uh, Benjamin. He was looking at it. He said, man, I, 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 I couldn't go find a church where I can go where it wasn't. They were not modifying things. But I really respect the Muslims because they are really holding to those principles, you know, uh, that are really that are really clear there. And for him, that was just amazing, you know. So we just continuing talking about some of these things and just to remind also the Ummah, the people, like you said, the leaders to be leaders, you know, to invite to the deen, to share the deen, and to us to really uh, be grateful for what we have uh, of the deen. And tarbiya, education, so important. So what closing uh, comments and advice do you have now as we conclude, Shay? Yeah, I think we have yeah, to do our part. Everybody has a duty. That's why the Prophet said, Kulukum ra in wa kulukum maskula and ra yati. Everyone is a leader, at least to ourselves. Set good example. We Muslim, Allah said, Kuntum khaira ummah. Only in the book of Allah, the last testament, Quran, there is this kind of sentence. Allah said, You are the best nation. Where the early scripture, you don't have this kind of ayah, this kind of sentence. Only in Islam. Allah said, you are the best ummah. Why we are the best? Because we follow what Allah wants us to do and we follow the teaching of Prophet Muhammad and we carry out our duty as Amal Ma'ruf Nahi Munkar. Amal Ma'ruf and Nahi Munkar calling people to goodness and forbid people from doing anything that is bad. It starts from ourselves. That's why the saying of the Prophet La Darara wa La Dira. This is a very short hadith. That I always remind my students, please memorize this hadith. You say you love Prophet Muhammad, memorize his saying. And it's simple. Even you, Brother Adi, I believe you have memorized that. Very simple. La darara wa la dirar. La darara wa la dirar. Finish. The Prophet is telling us a Muslim is a person who will not say or do anything that will cause harm to themselves. Set a good example. And then you are not going to cause harm to others. That is a Muslim. He's a person who uh, believes in what is good for him and he will do it. Show good example. Be kind, be loving, be sincere, be committed, be clean, you know, be honest, you know, be trustworthy, all the good things. That's all the Islam wants us to do. And when you have done that, you can set a good example to anybody wherever you go. And that's why the Allah says, be connected to Allah wherever you are. Whatever you do, you are a businessman, don't cheat, don't lie, be an honest yeah? businessman. Honesty is the best policy. You know, when you are become a husband, be the best husband, the Prophet said, the best among men are the men who are best to the wife. Example. Yeah, when you are a father, be a good father. Take this as a mana. When you are a good leader, then you become a good leader. Then those who are not leader become good follower. You see, that's how you go move on, move on. And this is the beauty of Islam. Islam has everything from cradle to grave. Everything is so detailed. When you want to eat, eat what is halal, what is good, and how to eat. How to drink also Islam is here to guide you. You want you to talk, you want to talk, you can talk, but you how to talk? What kind of, of, of word you should use? Everything is guided. You don't get it in any other adhyan because they are not perfect yet, they are not completed yet. Only in Islam, Allah said, akmal tulakum dinakum. Today I perfected my religion for you. Whatever you need in this life, until the hereafter, everything is there. And I have completed my favor upon you. Whatever you need. From cradle to grave. How to educate a person. How to eat. How to drink. How to behave. How to talk to your parents. How to talk to the elders. How to deal to the young. The neighbor. And everything. How to do business. Everything is there. And then Allah said. I choose. 
Allah used this word. I choose this religion for you. It cannot be wrong. The problem is now the people are, are lost. They don't know what to choose. But this religion that Allah sent to Prophet Muhammad, he himself chose for us. Can you imagine, Brother Eddie, if the creator, the king, choose something for you? How do you feel? Oh, you feel so blessed, you know? And then if a, a, a guy is known, number one, specialist in this, he chose something for you. You feel so great. Now, this is the creator, Al-Khaliq, who created every one of us, choose this religion for us. Allah is a great blessing. It's really a great blessing. Thank you so much, Sheikh. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. Allah. Thank you for sharing your advice. Jazakallah, it's very nice to, to have you on the program again. May Allah reward you. Allah. Allah. Send my warm salam to everybody, to your family. We hope you will meet up soon again, inshallah. inshallah. You know, we always love to see all the good people around us. And we love to share whatever we have with all the good people. You know, it can be anybody. The Christian, you have good people around them, the Buddhists, the disbelievers, so-called disbelievers, the atheists, the free thinker. You know, I have been traveling to China before, having a lot of discussion with all the think tank who are their communists, but I talk to them about religion. They, they are very open, alhamdulillah. They start to realize, oh, because they just do not want to get involved in any religion because they don't have the understanding. You see, they take religion, it's like a drug, you know, make you, you know, high and then forget about your responsibility. You have people who go for chanting and go for meditating, they become lazy. Of course, they don't like people like that. They want people to be productive. I say that is what Islam is about. It's about creative, constructive, productive. You just name everything good there is in Islam. Allah. Thank you, Shay. Of course, at the end, at the end is Allah who gives hidayah. We will just try our best to share whatever knowledge Allah has given us. And the best knowledge is what Allah said, call Allah, or call Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Not what I think, how you think, but what Allah said and what the Prophet ﷺ have taught us. That is pure knowledge. Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alham. Thank you so much, Sheikh. Thank you. Jazakallah. Welcome, we'll brother Eddie. Jazakallah. We'll be in touch, Sheikh. Inshallah. Inshallah. We keep on going. Now okay. we are in contact again. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And if you like this episode of the Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Subscribe right now.